Hello, welcome to Board Deck and Dice. Today I am uh, reviewing a copy of a game that was on Kickstarter. This is Dice Throne. You can hear there is a chunky lot of components in there. Uh, Dice Throne is a Yahtzee battling game style, uh, but with a bit more to it, or is there? Let's see, let's go have a look how it plays. So in Dice Throne, each player has a uh, player board. There is six in the championship edition. We're just going to start with the uh, Barbarian just because it was at the top. As well as a player board they have a little uh, leaflet to put by the side which just gives them the um, uh, special icons that they have uh, in terms of token tokens and the dice chances down here. So one, two and three are all swords, four and five are hearts and six are the stars so you can see straight away that the rage ability is going to be the hardest to perform because it takes the stars which are the rarest then in the box there is this lovely uh, system where you just take the tray for your uh, person and put them back in very well there so I'll sort that later and um, they get a combat point meter a health meter five dice, a deck of cards with a uh, turn order card and some tokens which are specific to their person. So here I have two concussion and one stun and the effects there tell me that they do not stack. So every turn you're going to be adding combat points onto your combat meter. You start with two and a health of uh, 50 at the start of the game and you also take four cards. Cards can be two types, they can be upgrades which will play to there for that combat uh, points or instants that play at that point. Uh, this would let me draw another two cards um, and generally they cost 0 to 3 combat points and they can be played at various times. So going through the uh, the round we would have upkeep phase where we get um, where we take off any status effects that have run out so if someone's concussed um, they uh, can remove that phase uh, that well that removes after the income phase but some t uh, stat, uh, some tokens I think the moon elf has tokens that remove every turn if they're on there in the upkeep phase then we move to income we get a uh, combat point and a card but seeing as we're on the first time we've already drawn four so uh, that's uh, it for the first go but any other round we would draw another card then we have the main phase part one which is where we will play cards uh, we will play upgrades and we can sell any cards we don't want for one combat point so if we have an expensive one we don't want we can get rid of it if it's useless and get some combat point in this phase i would buy that for one cp so i've upgraded my sturdy blow to level two and oh i can even in fact i won't i'll just go straight to level three which you're allowed to do for three cp if i'd gone from level two i would only have to pay the difference between them so i may as well sell that one because i don't need it anymore for one and so there we are we've upgraded to um one of our hits to be more uh potent and that's six undefendable damage after we've done everything there we will take our dice and we will roll them uh, we get up to two re-rolls and we're trying to get various things to match uh, things on here or to match numbers for a small straight or a large straight so I've got three four and five so I'm gonna take my first re-roll I'm gonna go for one of the straights so I haven't done it there, I've just got hearts again, it's not going to leave me much. Uh, and I've rolled an absolute terrible one. So I've rolled four hearts which in the run of game wouldn't allow me to heal, six, uh, heal five. But actually at this point in the game wouldn't do me much good at all. I could have chosen to re-roll any of them and done something else. Had I got the small straight I would have get dealt nine damage. That would then activate the defensive roll. So say I was being dealt nine damage, this would be a great roll because as soon as I'm dealt the nine damage, I heal two for every heart that I've rolled. So I would roll if I roll three hearts, 
I would deal, I would heal six, only taking a total of three damage. So let's pretend I've taken nine damage. There we go. That time I've not healed at all. Some characters have two defensive um, abilities and you have to choose one of them before you roll. So on this one you can deal counter damage or you can inflict poison. Um, but you have to choose before you roll, it's not a case of roll and choose. You carry on that way until one person's health uh, goes down to zero and the other person is the winner. That is Dice Throne. So uh, I'm just going to start this off and say I really like Dice Throne. I love it as a two player battler, I think that um, Somehow, despite you having these massive combos, games remain close and competitive. Each character feels uh, unique and different. The use of cards, tokens and dice works really well. So you could have a character that has to buff up its attacks by earning tokens, but then the other player watching that's going, ah, oh, okay, I know what they're trying to do, and they've got cards or powers that can affect those tokens, or they're just a straight brute who just attack, 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 and you're thinking, if I can just unleash this attack, I'm gonna win, but then my health's going down. The components are uh, really, really good. Each character has its own little dice, uh, own little insert part that comes out separate, so when you're setting up, you just give someone that box, and everything they need is there. The tokens fit the bottom, the cards on top, uh, the dice have a special slot down the side, and everything else fits on top of the cards. Brilliant. Um, the game is fast. The Perhaps the rules kind of almost overproduced to a, to a degree, um, given how simple the game is. Um, the rule book does have is very picture based and that's good, but I think the order doesn't necessarily help. The order of the rules doesn't necessarily help you get into this game, which is simple. They do have a simple version, but kind of that might be a preference thing for me. I just want to know how to play the game. Good, duh, let's go. Um, but it does try and break things down, perhaps a bit more than I would have expected for a game of this uh, this simplicity. Um, if I had some other negatives, it would be the um, art on the front of the cards which tells you what the power is it's very color coded but i just wish they'd done something more with the background there there is kind of a dice in the background but they could have made it so it fits the board because they're only ever going to go on one player's board and if you look at the board the art is visible beneath those uh, beneath the card slots where they're going to go but when you play the card to it, suddenly you're missing that, that kind of background art. And I just think it would be nice to have something character specific there. Um, because they do look, if you just looked at the cards without everything else, they would look boring. Um, and then my only other criticism, and again this is, this is in terms of preference, is you already have... Um, a somewhat lucky game because you're rolling dice. Yes, you get to mitigate and your mitigation will be possibly more than just the two rolls, depending on the character you choose. Some can affect their dice even more. But um, the when you're playing with more than two players and you're not in a team, so you're playing a three or four, or three for all, uh, to, to roll the dice to target, I just find unsatisfactory. In a game like this, I want to choose who I attack. I want to choose who I'm bullying. Um, so I think a system where there was consequences for picking on the same person, something like the tag back system in Adrenaline or in um, the game with the bots, Gikaido, which is a far worse game than this, but that targeting system where you have to choose you can only target one person, then you have to target someone else, and then you have to, um, then you can reset them all once you've targeted everyone. R that was one of my favourite parts of that game because it meant you couldn't just bully someone. You could still choose, but your choices were people you hadn't already attacked yet. I think uh, in this game, something where there's already tokens, people are already using tokens, some kind of, you know, in a multiplayer game, where if someone gets attacked, they get a, a tagged token. Uh, or a, p a plus power token so that next time they attack they can add these to their power um, that would make people think twice if they get attacked they get a plus power if they get attacked again before they go they get plus two and it's just escalating like that that would make people think twice because they wouldn't want to be the person who's attacked back 
Uh, and I think for me that would be more satisfying than a dice roll. However, that is easy enough to house rule, so really kind of minor preference complaints. Like I say, my biggest complaint would actually probably be the artwork and the cards uh, not being there. And why is that a complaint? Because the rest of the production is so good. Um, it reminds me of Summit where the production was so good yet the cubes didn't put in the slots cut out for them. So it's just that kind of minor misstep really. Um, gameplay is is so much fun, um, more depth than your King of Tokyo, your Gokaido, your other Yahtzee rolling games because of the cards, because of the combat power. Uh, all works together really nicely. The six characters in this Championship Edition are awesome. There are more characters coming out on Kickstarter, and if they're in those, I can only assume they're going to be in that little insert each again, which is a, just a great way of distributing it. So, uh, intimidation factor slightly more than your. Well, let's have a think. Now, when I started gaming, King of Tokyo was my first game, and that had a lot of intimidation factor because the rules were pretty bad, and there was a lot of iconography stuff I was getting used to. This probably factors around there, because although it's very simple, there is iconography. This is explained on the little leaflet you get next to your character if you want it. There's a lot of um, different tokens for different players with some overlap. Then all the dice have different iconography depending on the character. This boils down to the same thing in terms of percentage of, of how often that icon is going to come up. But yeah, there is... Um, more than your very basic gateway game uh, intimidation. So there is some intimidation, not incredibly lots, but there is some, especially for a new player coming in. Uh, rule book. Fine. In fact, well written, but I think for me it's a, it's a question of layout and, and preference order. So for me, not as good as it could be, uh, better than medium, by a long way and n not at all the worst I've seen but I would like it to be just more immediate to the playing stage I found reading the rules more of a slog than I should have is is where I would land on that fun uh, top stars uh, top dog brilliant fun um, great game uh, the balance is uh, is brilliant in my experience I've never seen someone whitewash someone else uh, it's never been absolutely clear that someone's going to win. You always feel like you're in with a chance. Um, the defence powers and the attack powers work off each other well. I love the fact that defence uh, powers often give you a choice. Do you want to counter-attack or do you want to avoid damage? Uh, do you want to counter-attack or do you want to buff up some of your tokens? Um, so yeah, I really like that. A lot, a lot of fun. Would I add it to my collection? Hell yeah. Yeah, this would go in my collection. Um, and it would uh, totally replace Gokaido for me. Um, the only thing Gokaido has over this is those wonderful uh, models, but there's no movement in this, so it's not needed. Um, but the gameplay, it blows Gokaido out of the water. The character variation blows Gokaido out of the water. I think there's room in your collection for King of Tokyo and this, because this is a pure battler. King of Tokyo has the kind of... Uh, victory point stuff, but yeah, this this is this um, would go in my collection without a shadow of a doubt. That is uh, Dice Throne Championship Edition. Thanks very much for watching Board Deck and Dice. We'll see you next time.